When it comes to Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert, you'd think that they are probably BFFs, right? I mean, they're in the same freshman class in Congress. They're both former QAnon members, possible current QAnon members. They're both insurrectionists. They have the same far-right beliefs. They're extremists. They're also both very stupid. So you'd think, how are they not, like, inseparable? But apparently the opposite is true. There's bad blood between Marjorie Greene and Lauren Boebert, and they got into a verbal match that was so heated during a Freedom House caucus meeting that they had to be separated, and people feared that it would escalate. So I had no idea that this happened. This story is from the end of April, but it totally flew under the radar. But I've got to share this with you. As Olivia Beavers from Politico writes, privately, Republicans say Boebert, who's seen as more of a party team player than Green, detests being tied to her Georgia colleague. And when the House Freedom Caucus Board of Directors gathered last month at its usual spot a few blocks from the Capitol, the two tangled over Green's appearance at a February event organized by a known white nationalist. Their confrontation grew so heated that at least one one onlooker feared the green Bobert back and forth might escalate beyond the verbal cage match had another board member not stepped in to de-escalate, according to a GOP lawmaker who was granted anonymity to describe what happened. The incident was confirmed by three people connected to the Freedom Caucus, whose members largely avoided public criticism of Green and Representative Paul Gosar at the time and focused their discontent on the event organizer Nick Fuentes. Still, not everyone in the Freedom Caucus sees Bobert and Green as distinct. When both leapt to their feet during President Joe Biden Biden's State of the Union this year to chant for a border wall, one day after their board meeting clash, a viral photo captured Representative Brian Donald sitting between them, looking uncomfortable with the display. Very, very interesting. So, you know, the private dynamic is a little bit different than the public dynamic because, you know, they've both kind of one up to each other or piggybacked off of one another when they were or when Lauren Boebert specifically was attacking Ilhan Omar and was calling her part of the jihad squad Marjorie Green jumped in they both were yelling at Joe Biden like un uh, unhinged fools during the state of the union so you know it's interesting that behind the scenes they actually don't like each other and it stems from a disagreement about Marjorie Green's appearance at uh the white nationalist equivalent of uh, the Conservative uh, Political Action Conference, or what is it? Uh, CPAC, CPAC. You know, uh, she doesn't think that it was appropriate for Marjorie Green to go to uh, that white nationalist alternative to CPAC. And um, I don't know if it's because she disagrees with Nick Fuentes, because I think that if you press her, she probably would agree with at least some of what he had to say. But um, more importantly, I think that she doesn't like the optics, right? It's an optics nightmare because what Republicans are doing is they're trying to slowly introduce more explicit white supremacy to their base. But you can't just jump right in, right? They, they've dipped their toes in. They've dipped their ankles in. But if you jump in all at once, then you kind of give up the game. And I think that Lauren Boebert, as dumb as she is, is at least savvy enough to acknowledge that you can't really go full white hood. Like showing up at this event kind of proves what the left has been saying about the Republican Party, that they're all a bunch of racists. So, you know, we can't continue to have plausible deniability and say racist things about the squad and uh, people in this country if you're going to literally go to white nationalist events. So you destroy our credibility when you do that. So that's what I'm assuming Lauren Boebert was, you know, um, heated about. And Marjorie Green, you know, she would never back down from anything because she can never admit that she's wrong. So she decided to push back. But what's interesting is how intense that exchange got between the two of them. Um, I wonder if Lauren Boebert feels the same about Gozor or she just holds this animosity towards Green because they're kind of lumped together for good reason. It's really fascinating to me. And to be clear, this story has no substance whatsoever, but it's one of those junk food stories where it's not really going to do much for um, you when it comes to substance and being informed, but it's it's uh, food for the soul. It makes you feel better about this country to see that these goons are ripping each other apart. Uh, you know, I can't help but think, let them fight. I hope it continues, uh, you know, and I'll leave that there. This is just... An interesting little story that, um, for whatever reason, put a smile on my face. I, I hope that this beef between them continues, and I hope that it gets public.
Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there, like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today. Mike is a total shit lib. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.